what we're going to talk about with Kyle is some, um, uh, to use a vicism, some nuanced critique. And we're not, we're not, we're praising Kyle because he just did a great job. But some people say he can't do anything wrong. So we're going to talk about that. But what we're saying is he put on a coaching clinic and what, and he does it pretty much every week with his game plan. Yes. Yeah. His game plans are usually right on point in terms of what it takes to be. They're brilliant. They're always right. So let's get into Kyle. When we talk about what Kyle could do better, it's not that he's not a good coach. We we put him in the top echelon and critique him as such. We're, yeah. we're putting you at the at the top at the top echelon, and that's how we're grading you. We agree that your great game plans are great. So we look at like not little things, but we 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 dig deep. And so what so, do you see? So yeah, I did have a critique of Kyle from that game. And so when I critique Kyle right first, I think he's one of the five or six best head coaches in the yeah. NFL. And I think if he's the best long-term young coach in the NFL, just because Andy Reid and Belichick are a bit old, that's how high we have think I think of him. So I grade him on a scale where I grade, where I look at Mike Tomlin and Bill Belichick and Andy Reid. I think he's that good. And I think he's proven that from a game planning standpoint, ability to develop players standpoint, ability to develop coaches standpoint, he is that level of head coach. Mm -hmm. Where I had a problem with him on Saturday is because I thought that he nearly almost lost that game before they could actually win it. And where I say that is because, so when I come to critiquing coaches, I hate critiquing play calls because to me, critiquing play calls is a result oriented evaluation. You see the play, you see that it doesn't work. And then you right. say a different play would work. That's not analysis. So, no, that's, no. that's just saying that, that didn't work. So do yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Where I critique him is decisions and game plan choices. Right. Well, was your game, did you have the right plan? Well, with Kyle, he always has the right plan. Or if he doesn't have the right plan by the second quarter, he's adjusted to the right plan. So you can't really critique that because for the most part, he's right on. But there are a few in-game decisions that I think sometimes are perplexing. And for me, the one that made no sense was when they got the ball with 30 seconds on the 25-yard line, why with C.J. Beathard, did they try to go down the field? You have 30 seconds and two timeouts. Arizona has only two timeouts, so you can take that ball to half, okay? You're up 7-6, to six, and C.J. Beathard has played the best half of his career. Why do you risk? Like, what's the risk-reward ratio in trying to take that ball down the field? And, you know, C.J. did fumble, but they were a play before that. They were a play away from just losing that game right there because – Yes, Kyle called the right play. Yes, Jet McKinnon was open on that delayed little out route. But CJ threw an awful ball because he's CJ Beathard and it was nearly a pick six, but the guy dropped it. And that's the kind of play where if it was a pick six, yes, it is CJ Beathard's fault. But you don't put any, there's no point in 30 seconds and two timeouts to go down that field, especially when you're getting the ball in the second half. Why not yeah. just take that into half? Great half, pump up the guys, come back. You know that you're going to get in halftime and get a couple good adjustments and run the football down the field on your first drive of the second half. Everybody knows that you're going to be able to do that. Why, what was, where was the thought process in, hey, 30 seconds, especially like, let's look at your past game. George Kittle played what, 27, 28 snaps. So it wasn't like you were just going to be able to throw to him all that drive. So your past game is Brandon Ayuk, a couple of third string type wide receivers, Ross Dwelly, with C.J. Beathard throwing the ball, Jet McKinnon is your back out of the backfield. And this is Jet McKinnon two years removed from missing two years from an ACL. And, and then an offensive line that's not always great in just drop back pass pro, especially the right side of your offensive line, especially because Justin School is already hurt. So, yes, I'm going to be a great little, in pass pro. I'm going to be a little nicer. You can I'm say I'm going to be a little nicer. In pass pro, they stink in pass pro. They do good sure. running. Run they struggle. Okay. They struggle. struggle. They okay. struggle. So they struggle. the thing is, the thing is, in that situation, it was like, yeah, he was calling the right plays. Yeah, the, the I see where I just don't understand the entire thought process. That's when you just eat it, go into half, and bring it out. I just it that one that that decision was just perplexing with Kyle for me. And I think there's a few over the years that you can really hone in on, like, I don't understand, like, why he didn't trust his players here, but then he trusted C.J. Beathard with 30 seconds and two timeouts in what is technically still a road game yeah. against a division rival who's a playoff team. Yeah, I'm, I was confused by the decision, and I think that is something that he can get better at because I think he's so good with his game plans that even with this team, if he get if he's just a – tiny bit better in that area of his coaching he could even win eight games with this this kind of a team because he's well, that good 
But what I'm saying is, if if CJ Beathard had thrown that pick six, which was, I mean, dying to get picked off, they would have lost the game. If that had happened, everyone would have been dumping on CJ. It would have been CJ's fault from all the media and all the press, but it's really not. You know, it's football is way more complicated than that. And it, it is CJ's fault in the sense that he threw the ball and he's not that good and he should be better. But it's Kyle's fault for even trying that two-minute drill. The way I look at it is if you actually try with this team to do a series of drop back passes one after another. Oh, yeah, you're gonna your quarterback's gonna get hit. Some bad's gonna happen. And it's like they got four plays off, I think, on that drive. Like, yeah. there's no way that they can execute drop back passes well, per, I mean, perfectly, at like more than a 50% clip. It, it's, you're going to have a penalty, or you're right. going to get a block, or there's going right. to be a drop, or th- some bet, something. Right. It's not just – Grant's not it's saying not just it's just the offensive it's, line. It's, it's the not fact just that the, court, just, yeah, the offensive everyone. line struggles in pass pro. Then you go to the fact that the quarterbacks don't really move that well in the pocket, and you're playing with three third – Two, three, two receivers that have not played a lot of football with Brandon Ayuk. No, George Kittle is in and out. It's like there's so many moving parts, which is why that situation just feels like just take it into half. So it's like it's not going to – it may not happen on the first play. It may not happen on the second play. But, I mean, come on. It's going to happen, and you know it's going to happen. You don't have right. to do this. Kyle, right, and you, go you back, don't have to do this. You go back to the Miami game, right? Jimmy throws the pick. The half is already a disaster. I think it was 45 or 50 seconds. They went back out and Jimmy threw another pick and ended the ball game. Now that one, I get a little bit more because you're not getting the ball to start the second half and you're trying to get some momentum because you're getting obliterated. But this one, I don't get. You're winning. There's no way they can stop the clock. You can't give the ball back to them. There's only 30 seconds and you're playing with a third string quarterback. Who's, and you've had a good half as a team. There was no need. The best case scenario for them was that they would have gotten like a 50, 55 yard field goal with, and Robbie Gold, would he have made it? Who knows? But the best, but the worst case scenario was the second worst case scenario was what happened. The first worst case scenario was what almost happened. Yeah. All I can say, and we'll move on from Kyle after this, is um, he is an expert play designer, maybe the best one in, in the world. Up there was Sean Payton if not the best. He's also an expert game planner, as we've said, but uh, he doesn't have much experience with like game management stuff. Those are usually head coaching executive decisions, not on the offensive coordinator. And he's been a head coach for four years. It took Andy Reid a long time. Is he even good at game management or does he just have Patrick Mahomes now? Maybe this is just... No, I don't think I don't yeah. think I don't think Andy Reid's game management is still good. I, they they throw the ball still way too much. The See, thing with Kyle, has more of a creative mind. Like he can think of the the play, the game plan, but this stuff is much more analytical risk assessment. It's like it's a different part of your brain. So where I push back a little bit with Kyle is that with him, I feel like one he's obviously young and still growing, so we got to give him that benefit about that doubt. But two. We occasionally see just brilliant like thought process and game management where he's able to take a minute 35 clock and they take the drive all the way to half and kick a field goal. They did that like three different times last year. And we see brilliant sense from him of, hey, this is the clock. This is how I want to manage it. And he analyzes it. It's just I don't understand the inconsistency with it because there's times where I say he's right on. But I don't know why there's times like last game, like against Arizona, where 30 seconds, two timeouts, it's a no-brainer eat it into half. There was one more series in the fourth quarter. Uh, it was a three and out. And the first play was the throw to Kittle that Kittle dropped. Mm-hmm. You could say, hey, you know, good play, should have caught it. But again, he'd been out a while. Uh, executing executing pass plays is really hard. So the first play is a pass. They don't execute it. Now they're in second and ten. Second play is the zone read to Beathard. He gains two yards, third and eight, and now you're in third and eight. So, again, right. that was the other one when I would have been like – but basically the rest of the game, what I want to say with Kyle is the objective was to avoid drop back passes as much as possible, and he basically did that. And mm-hmm. it just goes to show you that he could do that every week. And if he had done that a little bit more in the past this season, just been a little bit more conservative, maybe they'd be – maybe they'd have eight wins instead of six. Who knows? And you know no. what? In the grand scheme of things, maybe it doesn't matter because this is kind of a lost season. But if he can improve and get those two extra wins every season, it'll add up and it'll make him a better coach. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because the thing is, the thing is that the reason Grant says he should win those games is not because he screwed up royally or anything. He's saying your game plan is so good and you've gotten these guys to execute so That's much where backups. you can protect, just protect them just a little bit where they don't make the mistake. Just avoid making yeah. that mistake with them a little bit. Because yeah. the thing with it's it's like a LeBron syndrome, right? LeBron, why didn't you win the finals when you took George Hill and J.R. Smith to the finals? That's the kind of situation Kyle's yeah. in right now. Kyle, right. you've taken these third stringers. You've created such a game plan that you're in this game. You're right there. And, you know, maybe it's too much to ask of you. Maybe it is a nitpick. But the way I see it is that I think that if you make that one decision differently in terms of your game management standpoint, not your play calling, not your play designing, or your decision in terms of maybe, hey, how am I going to attack them on this drive thing? From that standpoint, then you could possibly win these games too because you're that good. Yeah, everything about how he called this game and everything about his game plan was safety first. Let's protect the offensive right. line. Let's win with our run game and defense. Let's protect CJ. All it's going to be is handoffs, play action passes to the running backs and the tight ends. I mean, they, the wide receivers weren't even in the game. No need to throw outside the numbers or anything down the field or anything difficult. And it's like, yeah, dude, you can do that all the time. Like perfect execution, perfect plan. When you get, you know, if you get uh, Carson Wentz or Matthew Stafford, you don't got to do that anymore. You can go do whatever you want to do. But as, as long as you got these quarterbacks, yeah, you kind of have to coach this way. Um, so good for you. You did it. Really great. I know he yeah. didn't want to. I think he wants to be, you know, Mike Martz. He wants to have the best offense in the league. But you're a couple years away from that. So I disagree. That. I, yeah. I don't think he does because he's drafted defense and been about building his defense here. So I do think he has all the tools and he does see the right perspective. I'm just hoping that he grows just that little bit yeah. more because he's so close. Yeah. He's so close to being yeah. the top coach in the NFL. He just needs a little bit of maybe like a Mike Tomlin where, hey, I'm going to be just a game manager right here right. As, as a head coach rather than focusing on what my offense can do and how I can attack them. I'm just going to manage this side for my offense right now. If he had that just a little bit more right. – it would, I think it would do his total coaching well, he ability. Built a lot his of career and became the top offensive coordinator, the top paid head coach by being the aggressive go for it uh, coordinator. Now right. he's set for life. He's got a head coaching job. He can kind of become more of the head coach and be like, you right. know what? I can, I can mute my offense a little bit here. It doesn't reflect on me if the offense is ranked 20th this year. It's okay. We can win another way. And I think that's what where he's getting to.